in the course of this discourse. Um, first of all, there was a clear collaboration between the Kenyan government and Nigerian government. Uh, I'm happy now that they are denying the fact that Namdekano was arrested in their place and also handed over to the Nigerian government. But I can assure you that by the time we finish with them at the international court, they will never remain the same. What's important at this stage, and I'm, I've already made known to the world, is that he was arrested at the airport on the 19th day of June 2029, 21. And uh, he was taken to an unknown residence. That is a fact. He wasn't taken to a custody and they recognized the official custody of the police over there. He was taken to an unknown residence where he was subjected to inhuman treatment. Nandi Kano was tortured, maltreated, and beaten, mercilessly beaten. So these are facts within our knowledge confirmed by him to us. So after spending eight days in their custody, illegal custody, they now become the, on the Nigerian counterpart to come for him. And by the time they came, Nandikan was apparently unconscious at the point they came to, came to pick him. He was unconscious. He was life, near lifeless at the time they were back taking him to Nigeria. So, and they consequently they brought him here. So now, to tell you the, the, the level of their co 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 conspiracy and the desperation to get him jailed at all costs by enemies, they brought him here on, tw on, a, on a Sunday. And the federal government is fully aware that I'm the lead counsel to Nabi Kano. And there's, a, there's a, a charge against him before the court, which has been subsisting. Subsisting has been going on. Because after invasion of his premises on the 14th of September 2017, by the Nigerian military and soldiers, who killed over 28 persons in his house. And by out of providence, he was narrowly escaped. We filed an application before the court for an inquest into what transpired in his house on the 17th day of, 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 um, of, uh, of September 2017. For court to inquire as to what happened in his house, what led to his disappearance. And we are still in this process. Because that is fundamental. This is a person that has expressed to the world that is ready to come for his trial on October 14th, 2017. He wasn't planning to leave the, court, leave the country. He wasn't planning to run away from the trial. He was ready to come for the trial on October 14th. The matter was stated for commencement of trial. Then on, on uh, September 17th, his house was invaded. So to tell you that the government was not ready at the time to prosecute him. Because they have no evidence to establish even the charge preferred against him to even date. So they went after his life. Now it's compelling on the part of the court to inquire what happened to this person I granted bail. What led to his disappearance? Then, surprisingly, on the 28th day of March 2019, when the matter came up for, for shorties to show cause why they will not be committed for content, why they were unable to produce Nandi Kano. That was the proceedings of that day. The court gave an order, revoking his bow. Then we said no, because the court should be bound by its records. We said no, and we filed an application to get order vacated. Since 2019 to date, the matter had several come up before the court, the same court. And the court was not inclined to hear this application to vacate the other. And the worst thing is that the federal government has not filed any response to this application before the court. They have not filed a response in counter to application to get out vacated. They were not interested. What they are interested is to how to get in that canal at all, at, 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 at all means available to them. So now, he was brought into this country on Sunday after being detained, maltreated, subjected to all forms of injury, maltreated, and inflicted with severe injuries on account of handcuff that lasted in his, on his house for over, over four hours till the, till, till before he was brought to court. And you can see him on handcuff in, in, in court on that day. Those injuries are still there. And a number of medical issues he's having today on account of what was the kind of treatment that was meted out to him. So they took him to court on a Tuesday. Labaran, Tribal Labaran, who is the counsel that was in court on that day represent federal government, is fully aware that by the Sefa age of four is the lead counsel in this matter. And I've been I've been in court with him in all cases affecting the Namdekan and IPOB. He never extended the courtesy of, inf of informing me that this matter that my client was arrested 
was abducted because in this case wasn't was it arrested so but when we get to that bridge we cross it he was abducted and kidnapped from kenya and brought into this country so now he didn't feel it confident he didn't see it confident or didn't come appropriate to inform me that my client was arrested and been brought to court on tuesday so that shows there's a collaboration between the government in question as we stand today and the people who were appearing before them because if 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 i thought there was any element of i of of uh, of, uh, of transparency what they're doing uh, is compelling on the part to, for the, on the part of the AG, not uh, the, the lawyer representing the attorney the for the to inform me that they are coming to court on Tuesday, so I can come to court and see my client. I don't know what happened, and this is quite far from what happened. So on Tuesday, I took him to court, and the court asked them, "Where is Barrister Jofor? Is he not in court? Is he not in, was he not informed?" They said, "No, they arrested him and brought him to Abuja on Sunday, and he's court today." So now he has. There's an underlying fact that my client will not get fair trial in that court. That's settled. The issue of fair trial has been taken away by this collaboration. But we, we keep on watching. We are putting, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are going to see them in court. So that is what happened as of today. I've seen him and he has given me every information and detail about what transpired in Kenya, how he was arrested, how he was taken to a non destination. And how he was maltreated, how they nearly killed him over there. And it's obviously from what he told me that it was at the behest of the federal government that they were doing those things. So, until when they beckon on them to come, these are against an, on, in, on, an obvious infraction to all international laws and treaties. So, but at, at, at that level, we're addressing it, at, we're going to address an international court at that level. At that level. So, um, let me concern myself what's happening in the country. So it's obvious from every indication that my client will not get a fair trial in this court. Obvious. Until when the contrary is established. And now, Nani Kano was minded in prison custody. Let me underline this fact. Long before he was granted bail, he spent over two years in custody before he was granted bail. The court itself is away that he was in prison custody before he was granted bail. And at the point he was in prison custody, Nani Kano at any point, there was never at any point in time, made any effort. Made an effort to leave the prison without the judicial process. Now they demanded him in DSL in, in custody where they made it near impossible for his relatives. He's, he, he, he's under a, a debilitating health situation. He has a medical condition that needs to be addressed as quick as possible. Because it's only a living that can face trial. So this I can stop at this time. You will recall that on the on the day he was taken to court, that was last week Tuesday. Uh, uh, Nandi Kano was allowed to address the court because I was not in court. I was not in court. So that enough shows you that's the problem. Nandi Kano is not a lawyer. And he has no competent to address the court. He must, he, he must address the court. Because if needful was done, I would have been in court to address the court. And also apply to the court that he should be remanded in prison custody. So that is a clear violation of his, of his constitutional right to refer trial. So, it, so because I was not in court, he was allowed to address the court. So that shows you that it's, that it's more to eat than me the eyes. Because they have, Labaran has my number. The, the office of AG has my number. They have simply put on call a call across to me that I've asked, they've, they've abducted, whatever they call it, they classified it as my client somewhere in Kenya and brought him to here. And I take him to court on, on Tuesday to continue to try to try. Then I'll be in court on Tuesday. And, it, and also convince the court on reason why it should be sent to prison, to the correctional center. But in this case, the court allow him, which is abnormal, which is unethical, allow him to address the court. Why should court be asking him why he run away when I'm not there? We have an application before the court, which contains his affidavit on oath, the post to before a commissioner for oath in Israel, stating the facts of what transpired in his house on September 17, 2017, September 14, 2017. How he nearly escaped that. How he was ready to come to court on 14th of October 2017 to face trial. Then this are before the court and court never entertained it. Court never entertained it. This is a record black and white before the court. Court has never entertained this application before the court. So I will be craving the court or at any at, at any adjournment for the court to hear it. Because it's fundamental to his fair trial, to, to the right. The court will hear and understand what transpired in his house. That's very fundamental. Then the court is now allowed to address the court on this fact. 
which are already before the court. So that's area why that's why I'm entertaining fear that he will, he will, he will be granted a fair trial in this court. So now coming coming to what's happening in court, the matter has now been adjourned to the sixth of October, uh, to the sixth of uh, July. Let it be clear to everybody, you never jump bell, because. If the federal government was serious about prosecuting them, they cannot. Can, if they are serious about prosecuting him, they were allowed him to come to court on September 14, 2017. October 14, 2017, to face his trial. Are you telling me that soldiers are invaded Nam in the Kano province are not from Fabuja? Are they not? Are they acting where they, they, they acted under the instruction of someone in Abuja State? The answer is no. They came from Abuja, they have instruction of the federal government to go to his house. So, and they are aware, they are fully aware that Nam Nekano was scheduled to be in court on October 14th. And in one of his broadcasts prior, prior to the time of, prior to the invasion of his premises, he told the world that he's coming to court to over 1 million members of IPOB. He informed, he informed the court, he told the world. So, when they allow him, if they have any case against him, to come to the court on October 14th, probably at the end of the proceedings, they will arrest him. So, he never jumped back. This is a person, okay, assuming, assuming without considering to the fact. That they will succeed in killing him on 14th of October, on the September 14th, when they invaded his premises. Will you be talking about his trial today or not? That's why it's no. Because it's only a living that can face trial. I'm not saying more. If he was abducted, the succeeded in abducting him on, 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 on that day, they invaded his premises and killed over to eight persons, civilians or as civilians. Then we should be talking about what they're saying today. So, but by out of providence, he will never escape being killed. So these are people who are fully aware that he was scheduled to be in court on October 14th for the trial. And in Abuja here. So why can't you wait for him to come to court if I have any case against him? So, and we have supplied the court this fact. We have supplied the court circumstances that led to his disappearance from court. We have informed the court and convincingly that Nanakan was ready to start his trial. But for the fact that he was, his life being, is under threat. So the court he has is under compelling obligation to listen to the applications before him. Let me say this to you, eh? because it's important for us to inform you appropriately. And whatever I'm saying today to you today, I will furnish you with documents to that effect, black and white. Before the date slated for his trial, the federal government, acting through the Attorney General Federation, filed an application to vacate to vacate his bail, to, back, to, to, to vacate his bail, right? On the premise that he has violated his bail condition. This application was filed in black and white and served on me. And I responded to that application because it's a matter for court to decide. We cannot say, we cannot at this stage, at, at that point in time, or, pro, or probably during that, during that period, determine when Nani can violate his bail condition or not. And also, I want you to appreciate the fact that I had also have filed an application to validate their condition before they file their own. So these are pending applications before the court. The court for the court to hear, hear my application to validate his bad condition, hear the one filed by the federal government that he has violated the bad condition, and also hear the one I filed in reply to what the federal government filed, stating that Nani can never violate his bad condition. So they're supposed to hear those applications. The court is under a duty to hear that application. I made decisions 